that's what we're working out right now. Appreciate it. So we could get this going. Okay, we almost there. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, sorry. Thought I said video chat. That's what we're working out right now. Appreciate it. So we could get this going. Oh, it's going to do that. Okay, thing we almost there. Oh, uh, okay. What'd you do? I just muted it. Oh, and I can hear it here. Hey, hey, hey. So now we are on Facebook Live as well. Okay, good. Good, good, good. So we got that working. So now for those of you that are on Facebook and watching on Facebook, you can now actually share it also. So we're just getting all this together. Trust me, next, just the first one. Yeah. By the next time, we, we're going to have a smooth transition. So no worries, no worries. We are actually live on the CEO Chick page. So you can actually just share it directly to your page now. So I'm actually going to do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and share as well the feed. Oh, you got it on here? Yeah. Okay, just hit share then, right here. Yeah. It has a little slight delay. Okay, dummy, while they get on there. Take All right, y'all, share, share, share. Let me do that on my page. Thank y'all for being on. Thank you. Bear with us. We are getting all this together. We're going to work it out. Yes, Lord. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Married to a CEO chick. So tell them, babe, how long we've been married and all that good stuff. I mean, churro we got. Mm -hmm. Let the dudes know, like, this is not, you Yeah, know. so uh, we've been married for 17 and a half years. Um, we have four children together, and I have one uh my that bonus daughter. My bonus stepdaughter. <laughs> um, uh, we have two in college. Our oldest two are in college now. We have three that are still here with us, and uh, we've been we've been doing great. We've been mm -hmm. doing great. Uh, you know, uh, going through ups and downs, and uh, going through the tough times and the great times together. Um, so it's been a, it's been a, a real uh, a real ride. You know what I'm saying? So. <clears throat> This is not just like, oh, we have one kid or, you know, no, we have, we have a tribe. <laughs> <laughs> we have a tribe of kids. Tell them and, their ages. Cause I think sometimes people are so shocked at like uh, the ages is, of our uh, kids. <laughs> is, uh, is our daughter, is the 19, uh, 18 is our oldest son. And then we have. Uh, Thanks for sharing, Rosina, Aja. I know, Josiah, I'm I know right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but um, uh, then we have Josiah is nine, <laughs> and Ethan is seven, and then Judah is six. Yes, so all boys. All boys, and then we have our our, our oldest uh, daughter. Oh, our oldest daughter in seven. college. Yeah, so we we have definitely had. Uh, hey, Justin. Hey, Janiya. I see you back on here. Hey, Monique. Hey, Pamela. Hey, Kay. Thank y'all for sharing. Share, share, share on Facebook as well. Um, so we can get the, the numbers up. We are getting our guests on. They either, they may have to call if we can't get them on um, sooner than later. But we are working all that out right now. Um, okay, good. They said that their video feed is just about there. Um, and so, yeah, so CEO Chicks, we have been together. I met Anthony when I was 17 years old, right? 16? Yeah, 17. 17 years old. When I moved down here from New York, we moved here the same, the same year. No, yeah, no. You moved a couple I came, years after. I came a year. Father. We're in Florida, by the way. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, I came down in 95. Okay, so we met back in, I graduated 96. So we met when I was a senior um, in high school. So, and we pretty much been together ever since. Uh, we are like, I don't know, we are definitely opposite. <laughs> let me tell you. So for those of you that, um, you know, they say opposites attract. Yes, we are definitely opposite. I'm telling you, his life would be so boring without me. <laughs> it definitely would. It would just consist of playing basketball and coming home. And working. working. Coming home. Yeah, he probably Definitely wouldn't get out. He probably yeah. wouldn't travel. No. Um, listen to different styles of music. Um, yeah. 
all that good stuff. Yeah, she put me on to like everything. I was, <laughs> I was scared to share. You know, I was like, uh, I listen to rock. Uh, I listen to contemporary. <laughs> Oh, this is a, it's not just hip hop. Sorry. <laughs> He's so well rounded now. <laughs> yeah. No, but a woman to do that to you, right? Uh, and, but sometimes it might be the opposite in your household. It might be where the guy is the one that kind of gets you out of your shell. But that, that's what they say that opposites absolutely do attract. Yes, Lena, class of 96. Imagine that. So um, we have been married now. Go, it'll be in July. I'm, I'm the years. one that's horrible. Thank yeah, she's you. not good with numbers, dates. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> He's the number guy. So <laughs> when it comes to the business, he helps with all the numbers and data and tech and all that good stuff. And I just work. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's talk because until they can get on, let's just, I want you guys to ask any questions that you may have, but what is, what would you define as marriage? Like that was one of the first questions that I had on the list <laughs> was literally what is marriage mean to you? Like, it just, I know there's different like views out there, the Western worldview, the Eastern worldview. Um, some people look at, at wives or wives, like some have several <laughs> wives in other parts of the world. I don't know why they want more. I wouldn't it. know. <laughs> I wouldn't take more than one. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a lot of work for one. <laughs> well, especially me. Yes. <laughs> I don't know about nobody else, <laughs> but it's a little bit of work when it comes to me. Um, but what would you say, what's marriage? What is it defined as for you? Or? Well, marriage to me is a, uh, is a partnership. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a partnership between, uh, me and my spouse. Um, so I think everything that we do once we're married is all together. So I don't see it as her or me. I see it as us. Everything that we do is us. So if, if we, if I get a new job, we are getting a new job because she has to go right along with what I'm doing. If we're moving or if we're uh, relocating to another place, it's us. You know, it's not like I can just get up and up and like, ah, oh, see you when I get back and then come back and work in another state. We can't. It's us. So it's, it's the whole unit, um, whether that involves kids, whether that, whether that involves uh, just me and you. Um, I believe it's just, it's just a partnership between us and how we, how we adjust to the uh, to the environment around us being uh, uh, in a partnership. Mm -hmm. So okay, that means it takes two people, right? Yes, of course. Two. So the communication has to be there and making the decisions, and you know, it, it's so much that happens when you're bringing two households together, and the way you were raised, and the way that I was raised, and so it can sometimes be very difficult. Can we talk about like our first year of marriage? If we just you know, since we stalling for the Rockmans <laughs> and whatnot, we might as well get. It people what they want <laughs> <laughs> uh, that first year of marriage was, was super rocky because yes. we were both raised differently it's horrible you know we were both raised differently you know I was basically considered a mama's boy because my mom did everything for me I I I basically I paid her to do to do my clothes wait wait wait, wait. <laughs> all right you know you can't just throw that out there you paid your mama yeah. your mom gonna be you say you know we lie it's so, I know, but that's, but you know, I was like, after you get to an age, she just can't do stuff for you, you know. For I'm free? Like, yeah, so I was like, look, you know, I'll give you some money and you can continue to do my clothes and, and do that stuff, you, you know, even me. though while we're here, uh, I pay you every time I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> every time we get paid. Yeah, I get uh, Yeah. You can say that. <laughs> All right, um, go ahead. So, uh, you know, so I was raised that way. My mom did a lot of stuff for me. I just, you know, went ahead and then worked and and uh, then came home and everything was taken care of. So when uh, when being married with Colleen, you know, it was like uh, I didn't expect too much as far as uh, I'm not a very uh, demanding person You're as not. far as uh, like I didn't need for her to do my food and I didn't need for her to I didn't have to. You have wanted it, but you weren't yeah. like. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. you know I, it would be great you know if I came <laughs> home and it was food ready and all, all that time. stuff right, but. If it wasn't, then it wasn't a problem. We would just go out and get something to eat, you know, you know or or we'll or I'll make something because uh, after after our first year, after our first year, we went back to work mm -hmm. and I had to start cooking and stuff for our son, yeah. uh, Makai. So it was kind of a it was kind of a a, a different transition, you know, because I had to do some cooking and I had to do some cleaning. I taught um, him how to wash clothes. Yes, uh, she taught me how to wash my own clothes. <laughs> And so now I, I'm a designated Slide. clothes washer. Mm -hmm. like He's so good at it. <laughs> He's so good at it. <laughs> this is what we do. Um, 
But yeah, that first year was, you know, two people trying to come together as one. Yeah. As in the Bible, it says, you know, two becomes one, but right. it doesn't say it's easy. No. You know? <laughs> so two became one, but it became one and it was like crashing and doing this stuff. Listen, y'all, I moved the picture so many times. Um, like, cause there were times I would just, cause I, I knew that like, just to say things to get him upset. Cause he's so calm you know always so calm and I'm like well dang does he care you know I was that you know when you're immature like that and you're like he must not care this nigga don't care now you know <laughs> so you just say stuff to try to like push buttons push or whatever buttons. and so I, I that's when I was like okay really dumb and young and so I was like oh man we got a hole right there you know we got to move the pictures over because you know or I threw a dish or he punched the wall or like, seriously, the first year was really horrible. Yeah. Like <laughs> me, really I, horrible. I, I used to always try to avoid arguments. So I would always try to leave the house. And I was very and confrontational. She was always like, no, you're not leaving anywhere <laughs> and locking the door or taking We're my keys. Talk about and I'm like, let me just go. Let me just go. And it didn't happen. So, you know, then we ended up having a whole Oh, Jesus. Rockman's up in here. Okay, good. Hey, Rockman's, we're going to get you guys up. So yeah, our first year of marriage was definitely interesting, to say the least. Um, how do we get through that, though? How do we, oh yeah, but we, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm sorry. But, but tell, how do we get through it? How do we get through that, that actual season of doing all that? Okay. We're going to meet y'all. Hey, Rockman's! Hey. What up? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, we What's got up? everybody on. I am so so sorry. Yeah. Mm. I was like, <laughs> 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 y'all make it on. And we were just talking about our first. What up, Tony? What's good, man? What's good? What up, baby? <laughs> My side, baby. We are so excited to have you guys on. Thank you so much for persevering on there. Yes, the Rockman kids got to have it. Hey. Listen, thank y'all for being on. Well, we thank you to be for here. Yeah, us. thank you so much We're for excited. having us. Yes, yes, yes. We are totally excited too. We were just talking about our first year of marriage and how horrible it was. Yeah, we got to hear those nuggets you were dropping. Those yeah. whole oh, oh, father. Yeah. I don't know if it was a nugget. We were talking about the plates that were yeah, dropping exactly. you know, during the time of all the uh the chaos when we were right. becoming one here. Hey, yeah, listen. Thank you all for being Everybody one. has chaos. Mm -hmm. Everybody has it. No one is safe from it. I'm <laughs> saying so. It doesn't matter how you deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yes. I want you guys to, without further ado, we have about 28 people that have joined in on Zoom yes. and another, I don't know, 20 something on Facebook because we figured out some way, well, he did, to put us on live Facebook. So yes. um, yes. go ahead and tell yes. us more about yourself. Introduce your, yourself. We let them know already that um, we've had a relationship with you guys over five years and just okay. um, the just how blessed we are to have been able to have you guys as our marriage coaches and how we met more often in the beginning and now we've grown up. <laughs> just preventive care, preventive right. maintenance. <laughs> no crisis management anymore. Absolutely. Yes, we are out of crisis. <laughs> so yeah, um, definitely. Let us I can't believe it's only been five years. I know, right? It seems, it seems like, like it's been longer, longer than, than five years. It seems longer than five years. Wow. That's amazing. Six, so probably, I was pregnant, so six more, more. Maybe no, six plus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 okay, that sounds more like it. So anyway, we're the Rockmans. I'm Rock Rockman. This is my beautiful, lovely, sexy wife, Janice Rockman. And uh, this year we'll be celebrating 21 years of being together. Wow. wow. 21 years, yeah. Uh, so I met her when she was eight. You feel me? Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> you know what I mean? We was on the playground. I was like, what's up? At the playground. You know? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we, we've been, you know, uh, we met uh, many, many years ago. And, you know, God has blessed us too imperfectly people that just decided to not give up on each other. And yeah. we've had a beautiful union together and she knows my thoughts and I know hers. And sometimes we can speak without even saying a word mm -hmm. to each other. And it's just a beautiful thing. And we're definitely not the perfect relationship. I know a lot of people see us and, and you know, we live in a world where people can post an image. People can create an image online and you don't really know the truth behind what someone 
or who someone really is. Mm -hmm. And one thing that Janice and I try to do is we really try to be authentic. And I think you and Tony really know that. We really try to be authentic and we try to let people know that we don't have a perfect relationship. We ha have never had the perfect relationship. We've had our trials, our ups and downs, but we've learned how to persevere and we've learned how to deal with problems as they come up mm -hmm. so that you can quickly bounce off and get on to the next thing. Yeah, it's about, you know, it's, life is like a big baggage claim. Everybody has bags to unpack and it's really about finding the right person to walk alongside you while you unpack your own. Because when you deal with your own internal chaos, the marriage and the relationship, the career, the money, it takes care of itself. Because everything around you is really a reflection of what's happening inside of you. So when you start to unpack your own bags and do your own work, instead of focusing on getting him to change and worrying about his reactions and be, trying to be validated by him and him owning all your power, then you really, you begin to create wholeness in your entire life. But it really does start within. So. Yeah. And we that can, was our introduction of who we, we are. No, it's not. I'm not done. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, you go, girl. I was also going to say, we've been doing this work for over 10 years. Over 10 years. Right? Um, we got certified to do life coaching about 11 years ago. And then we launched our relationship rescue RX brand. And we've done lots of television, um, done some writing, done lots of courses. Mm -hmm. And, There's a new um, radio show coming up. Yeah, we've now. got some radio stuff. With you. Yeah. Yay! And, um, and I just love this work so much. I decided I wanted to go on and you know do my work in psychotherapy. So I do that as well now. So there's a coaching to help move you from where you are to where you want to be and then the psychotherapy to kind of help understand how you got to where you are. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's so amazing. You guys are doing that. And mother, father, yeah. like the <laughs> forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got some kids too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Resident baby's daddy right, right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They all mine. They're, they're all yours. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Um, yeah. You know, tell us what, let's get into some of the questions that yeah, we have. We can boom, boom, boom. We can just zinger through. Yeah, rap, rapid yeah. fire. Rapid we'll fire. move oh, at your pace. Because <laughs> I know we only got so much time. Yeah, we're moving at your pace. Go, let's go. <laughs> okay, so we were talking about marriage and just what marriage, how you guys define marriage, what our definition of marriage is and so like nowadays I'm like is it a business you know um in our world is it just like you know let's be this power couple and I'm gonna get with you know this person so I can get more exposure to what I got going on um is it a true partnership is it about love like what is the Rockman's definition of marriage mm -hmm. two perfectly imperfect people who decided to not give up on God or each other wow that is the definition of marriage because there's not a perfect person. There's not a perfect mate. There's only a perfect God. So if you don't give up on him and you make a decision to not give up on each other, so many people get divorced just because they say, I'm going to get divorced. They don't make a decision that I'm going to stick it through. Now, mind you, we don't tell everybody to stay in every relationship. There are some reasons to walk away from a relationship, right. but there are so many that, the answer is there that they need. They just don't find it. And you have to learn how to just accept the person that you're with for who they are, right? Because we all have flaws. And that flaw, that thing that you hate, somebody else will probably appreciate. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Right? yeah. And, you know, I think to the level, the level of intention that you set um, for your marriage, it can be as deep, it can have as much depth in the ocean or as much shallowness on the shore as you choose to make it. So if you go after it just for one thing, if you go after it just because of great sex, or if you go after it just because he looks a certain way or she looks a certain way, I see a lot of clients that I sit across from the couch from and they're like, his hair is starting to thin and I'm not, I don't know if I want to be in it. I'm not attracted to him. He's got a belly now. He did it. If you get into it for those reasons, you stay on the shallow shores and that's probably what you're going to get out of it. Or this is going to be a, a upward, an upwardly mobile move. I'm going to marry somebody in a different tax bracket. If that's what you go into it for, that's all you get out of it. But if you go out of it to have a broader spectrum, if you want to increase and multiply spiritually and emotionally and mentally and physically and financially, you can really have a whole well-rounded experience and it won't just be in that shallow place. And there's no judgment if you want to stay in those shallow waters. But if you want to go into the deep, swim for the deep, ask for what you want and go for it in your marriage. Mm. Oh, that's right, baby. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right, so... um. So how, how does a man and a, and a woman's uh, uh, style of communication differ? So uh, that's a great point, Tony. 
Number one, women's brains are like spaghetti. Oh. Everything is connected. Really nice organic Really spaghetti. nice organic, <laughs> organic pasta, great tasting sauce, very <laughs> well sauce, right? Yeah. But it's like spaghetti. Yeah. Everything is interconnected. That's why you can have a conversation with a woman and you guys can be talking about, hey, you know, maybe talking about the weather or how your work day was or why you didn't take out the trash. And then that can be connected to something that happened three years ago. Well, I remember three years ago, you said such and such and so and so. And so the reason why you didn't do this, that or the other. Right? But what men have to understand is that women's brains, everything is connected to something It's like else. a highly sophisticated technological network. <laughs> Absolutely. A network. Right. So <laughs> the difference the difference with men, men's brains are like files and compartments. Mm -hmm. It's like a box. Or you, in food terms, like waffles. Or like waffles, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spaghetti, waffles, <laughs> got it. So then here's what happens with a man. You say, okay, let's talk about the bills. We're gonna take, a, we're gonna take out the box mm -hmm. about the bills. And we're only going to talk about what's mm -hmm. in that box. Yes. And then once that conversation is over, we're going to take that box, we're going to neatly fold it back up, and we're going to place it right back where it was and making sure that we don't touch any of the other boxes that are in there. Yeah. <laughs> One thing at a time. <laughs> One, One thing, thing at a time. time. Well, tell them the joke, like how we describe your, your way of thinking, like the entire family. <laughs> what? <laughs> the table. Oh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I say that uh, uh, my, my mind or my, my memory is like a table, right? So there's so much space on the table. So if I need to talk about something, I got to move something else out of the way. Come on now. Put that on the table. Yes. The table. I'm like, you need a bigger table. <laughs> yes. I'm like, I'm Absolutely. I'm on the table. That was just important. <laughs> I need to put something. I don't know how to make my table bigger, but right. yeah, you talk about my brain. It's like, all right, if we're going to talk about this. I need to move this off the table. Yes. Boxes. <laughs> yeah, come on, yeah, it's fun. I could be like, what are you thinking about? And he's like, nothing. I'm nothing. like, how right. you, my table is completely clear. <laughs> you, okay, so here, you know what? That takes me to my next point. So we're talking about communication, right? Mm -hmm. So here are the communication styles. For men, <laughs> men have a very special box that mm. they appreciate more than any of the other boxes that are there. And that's what I call the nothing box. Mm. Wow. That's, that's what Tony just mentioned. It's yes. a box. And, and there's absolutely nothing in it. Yes. That's why a man can have what they call a man cave. And women are always wondering, what are they doing in the man cave? You want to know what we're doing nothing. in the man cave? Yeah. Nothing. Yes. You yes. understand me? We're not doing a single thing. <laughs> but that's what we need to recharge. We need mm. to get away. Mm -hmm. We need to get into our nothing box in order to recharge. Now, women, the way women recharge is by connecting. Mm. So what? talking, communication, being able to download information because everything is interconnected. That's how they download. So then in terms of communication, this is where we begin to butt heads. Mm -hmm. The man is in the nothing box. And when the man is in the nothing box, it's really the worst time to try to go have a conversation with him. Yes, it is. Because why, Tony? Nothing's on the table. Nothing. There's nothing. nothing here. So you know what? We don't have a file <laughs> to refer to. <laughs> there's nothing there. Nothing. Right? So then we have to make sure when we're communicating that we're communicating at the right time. Mm -hmm. And men have to understand that for a woman, everything is interconnected. And women have to understand that men are single-minded. So we can only focus on one thing at a time, mm. right? So I think when we begin to understand that, we can communicate a lot better. Wow. Janice, help. That was so <laughs> great. <laughs> there uh, has to be a was, lot. Wait. That, that was a great <laughs> explanation, Rob. Wow. Great. It's be, almost like just take a pause. Just take a moment of silence for that entire right. explanation. And there's so much. I mean, we only have so much time on the web. Yeah. Like, you know, Denise and I, we do full weekends of this stuff. Like That's right. 12, 18 hours over a weekend. So we're trying to okay. cram a lot in 45 minutes. Wow, well, we're gonna go from there. Okay, so, so communication. So, <laughs> okay, so another right. okay, so another thing that's really important. What do men need to understand? Um, 
I think, well, for both men and women, I think it's really un important to understand what triggers you when you start to feel unsafe, unheard, or un unseen and unvalidated. And understand how you respond when you start to feel unsafe, you know? And so if you're gonna usually have one of three responses. You're either gonna be fight, flight, or freeze. Mm. Yeah. So find out and discover, are you a fighter where you want to address everything, talk about everything? This needs to all be like figured out, like by not by like <laughs> by the next millisecond, <laughs> you're raising your hand. Are you a freezer where you're just like a deer in headlights? Like, I'm not saying anything. I don't want to get into this. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Or um, are you a fleer, like flight, where you're like, where I need to get out. Away. I need to get some fresh air. You know, where's daddy? Uh, he had to take a, he took a, took a ride. <laughs> Cigarette, right? Uh, so whatever your typical, your, your, your trigger response is, try to work to do the opposite of that mm, when you're communicating. It's okay to say that let's put this on the shelf for the people that are the fighters. Okay. And it's okay for the people that are the flight, the flight tender, the, the flight risk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's okay to say, okay, we're going to put it on the shelf, but let's address it before the night is over. Right. And then for the people that are really long-winded and they have to say everything and bring up every file and every chronicle from 1992 and all of that, <laughs> put a time frame on it and say, we're only talking about this for 15 minutes. And if everything is not said in 15 minutes, then it's okay. Everything does not have to be addressed all at once. Also, whatever you're talking about, find out what's sourcing it because more important than what you're saying is what's sourcing it. Mm. If it's sourced from fear or love, if it's sourced from I'm afraid if he doesn't give me the go ahead on this career move or this business launch or he doesn't understand my vision, all those fear-based things, it's going to create more fear. Mm. So sometimes it's okay. Sometimes silence can be your best uh, way of communicating. And I'm not saying silence in a, t in a way of getting bitter, like, well, forget it. He doesn't understand me. But you can you can you can learn to dial back, take a deep breath, download download the Headspace app on your phone if you need to learn how to be mindful and meditate and slow yourself down, and um, and realize that when you're talking when you are talking to your spouse, try and talk to them about one topic at a time so you're not inundating them and overwhelming them. And just because you may be quicker with your words, because women do typically speak more words in one day, like per hour, some study shows the men. Don't use that as a weapon because guess what? If you win an argument, you both lose because you're playing for the same team. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that, that's absolutely powerful. So, okay, we are married to CEO chicks, right? Mm -hmm. So we got the man headed to the cave. We, we got the woman trying to bring the files and the table, you know, in the cave. <laughs> she put um, on the table, <laughs> fold it up, put it in. No, that <laughs> <laughs> the one with the bling on it. Yeah. So, you know, we go through all that. Uh, how how do we work this out? Some of the um, messages that I get regularly, some of the women in the network, um, they tend to clash uh, with their spouse sometimes when it comes to uh, running the business. Um, some, some men feel somewhat intimidated. Uh, I don't always know the full story. So, I, I'm very apprehensive about just simply saying, well, you know, he just don't understand or he just, you know, I'm very careful not to not to say that. So that's why I, I wanted to, you know, have this platform because uh, a lot of the coaches have that will come up well, very, very often uh, where the wife feels like, you know, he's not supportive of my dreams and my aspirations um, or he just doesn't get it. Or what would you say? Uh, to that couple, I know it's hard with not, you know, knowing all the pieces, but what would you, what advice would you share to them? Because there, there are several of <laughs> them tuned in tonight. One of the things that I say, and Colleen, you've heard me speak to this before, is that you don't have to become a professional success at the cost of your personal life and be a personal failure, yeah. so to speak. And you don't have to necessarily exceed personally and then um, set at the cost of your professional life. There is a way in which you can build your business and build your brand that your children and your spouse don't have to resent it. Mm -hmm. If you're getting a lot of resentment and a lot of feedback from them in that way, I would invite you to maybe consider looking at the way that you're building it. Every conversation doesn't have to lead with that. You can do, you can build your life in a way in which, you know, we always say God first, then each other. Mm -hmm. That includes your self care too, right. taking care of yourself. Um, and then the children, 
And then our business and our outreach or ministry or things like that, that we might you do have in to addition. Under, you have to understand your priorities. So put things in priority. And then if you can, you can set up your life in which a way in which every week you have something to look forward to. So no matter if you have to travel a lot or if you have a schedule that, you know, if you're doing network marketing or if you're an entrepreneur, so your hours are not always stable, you can have like a set date breakfast or have a set family movie night or a game night. So they have something to look forward to. Like we, mm -hmm. our children like to come in our room at night and try and like creep into our bed after we tuck them in. And we're just like, go back to your own room. But on family movie night, on Friday nights, we can have a sleepover in our room and they can put little pallets out on the floor <laughs> and, put, and make little tents and things. Right. But that gives them something to look forward to. And so then they can see that, okay, all of this work that mommy's doing or all this work that dad is doing, it's paying off. It's not at the cost of our family and our right. personal life. Right. And um, also, you don't have to throw it in their face because sometimes the way that people ask things, they're very confrontational. It's like, do you think I should do this? And then they don't say exactly what you mm -hmm. want. It's like, you're ready to just go off on them. Well, well sometimes, you know, men definitely know the things that trigger mm -hmm. their spouses as well. And so sometimes, like you said, the way a question is asked, mm -hmm. they may not have the wherewithal to give the true answer mm -hmm. because they don't want to create the tension that mm -hmm. can come from really telling how they really feel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, I want to make sure I'm supportive. Man, my wife, she clicked up with Colleen. <laughs> you know, Colleen doing her thing. Yeah. Tony got her back. Yeah. You know, I, look, I'm going to be a CEO chick just like Colleen, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, but you can still do that, but we also need to make sure we're doing this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And they may have, there may be some fear there and not that these men are fearful, but just like the Bible tells us, it's it's better to be on a rooftop in the corner of an attic in the house than to be living in a dwelling with a contentious woman. Yeah. And so men just don't want to deal with the drama sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we have to be man enough to tell our women the truth because we we want them to be the best version of themselves. We have to give you know, the, the tre a tremendous amount of support and make sure that we're being there for them yeah. in every way. Yeah. But we also have to make sure that we're being truthful as well. And what men really need to realize is sometimes, just like Colleen said, women will say things just to stir something up in you because they really want the real answer out of you. They want that real passion out of you. And we have to be willing to give it. Yeah. Um, and there's just some practical things that you can do to kind of balance things as well. Like there's some nights or some nights and mornings where I might go to the office but I'll try and make sure I have like, I'll pack lunch bags for the children because we have small children. Everybody on this call may not, but I'll pack lunch bags, even though they're not going to school and have them in the fridge. That way Rock doesn't have to think about it. And sometimes I'll even prep stuff for him or put stuff out on the table. I'm like, all of this is set. I'll be home later. This is ready for you. Now he's a great cook, by the way. He cooks as well. But just certain things like that can let them know they're not being left right, behind. They're, they're not being forgotten about. Yeah. I still stay up late and like clean, make sure everything's all set up and clean and organized mm -hmm. at night. He helps out too. But just making sure they feel that sense of validation. And then lastly, if your um, husband does not understand what your vision is, you know, I think it's a lot like what St. Fr Francis of Assisi said when he was talking about um, going into the world. He said, go into all the world and um, preach the gospel and make disciples of, of men and women. And then he said, and then if you must open up your mouth and speak. Mm -hmm. So in other words, let the intention of your heart and the kind of work that you do speak so loud within your family. Mm -hmm. You know, that's your first ministry. Make that, right. make that so solid and so tight that anything else you do, you don't even really have to say a word. They mm -hmm. see it. Yeah. Um, and I guess there's a lot else we can say about that. I hope that that kind of helps shed some yeah. light. Um, and then lastly, one last thing that just came to mind. Yeah, if you sure. do start really ascending and getting some more attention, don't throw it in their face mm -hmm. <laughs> and don't like kind of go on a power trip or talk down to them or speak to them in a condescending way. Even if you earn more money than your husband, like who cares? Right. What does that mean? I, I Are think, you defined by the dollar in your bank account? Right, absolutely. And the table and the tables can always <laughs> The tables turn, can always right? turn. The tables can always. So I, I think it's important to, you know, I, I think the key in all this is just understanding that you are on the same team. Yes. Have that team mindset, right? And just make sure that you have that interconnectedness where you just flow and yeah. you know what each other needs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> and I know as far as for me, um, we're two totally different people. Um, my wife is uh, definitely, she's an entrepreneur and she's uh, 
more of a, you know, she's always been an entrepreneur. I mean, she started out in cosmetology. Um, I know I thrive in more of a corporate setting. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's why I thrive. I know that's yeah. how I'm built. I'm not, I'm not the entrepreneur type. Right. You know, I, can, I, I have to have, I have to, I have to live in this box, right? <laughs> this box is me. Yeah, exactly. Here comes the co- compartmentalized, right? <laughs> I live in this box. I can thrive in this box, but outside of this box, I really need, I need direction, right? You point me in the right direction, I go at it, you know? Right. But if I don't have that direction, I don't have the wherewithal to go ahead and do it. So with me, uh, I, I, I tend to be that way with, uh, with everybody talks about the CEO Chick Network. It's a network for women. How do I get involved, right? But I'm like, well, I do the back stuff. I'm, I do tech, you know, I do, uh, I do a lot of the financial stuff. I do a lot of the stuff that's kind of the backbone of CEO Chicks. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I learned how to plug myself in and give my. But own. he was okay with that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, right. because I'm not. I'm like I said. I'm not looking to be. You out. know who you are. It's exactly. so important to be you know sure who of are. who you are. Like comparison is the thief of joy. It is. And the last <laughs> thing you want to do is start to compare each other. Like yep. know what your strengths are. And you. I mean, honestly, ladies, you don't want him to be exactly like you. I mean, that would be a nightmare. Two of you. Oh my gosh. You want there to be differences, and um, he doesn't want you to be just like him. But you yeah. can ask each other, "How can I help? How can I support? You know, um, how can we share this experience and grow together?" Yeah, and you know that that was one of the points that I was thinking about tonight. You know, as, as far as the differences with you know women. You know, like you were saying, Colleen, very progressive women, CEO chicks. And how does a man work with that? And one of the things I was thinking about, there are a few things. Number one, a man has to know who he is. Yes. You have to know who you are. Number two, you have to have defined goals yes. and have some sort of vision that you're going after. And then keep in mind the Oprah and Stedman. Oprah, everybody knows Oprah makes more money than Stedman, but Stedman can stand on his own two feet. He's a bad brother in and of himself. And I always say this, and I honor you, Tony, for saying that you're more of a corporate guy. I honor you for that because you know what? Some of the most successful people that I know are not entrepreneurs. Now, I know a lot of wealthy entrepreneurs. My wife and I are entrepreneurs. But some people who have just defined lives are in a corporate setting. And I honor that. And there are a lot of people like and are very wealthy, right? So being a corporate man is an honorable thing. I know people who make multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars mm-hmm. in the corporate setting. So standing on your own two feet and then also keeping in mind that the tables can always turn. You know, we talk about, you know, men and, men and women and sometimes women making more money than a man, but the tables can always turn. Things won't always remain. The same. Yeah. So just be careful not to like be def- too heavily defined by all those labels. Right. You know, um, you're not your car. You're not your your degrees and your title. You're not a number on a scale. You're not a number in a bank account. You know, you are you are made from pure potential mm-hmm. and pure and infinite love, and that's what you really are. Human spirit having an earthly experience, right. and it's important not to get too heavily defined by that stuff where it doesn't own mm-hmm. your power. Yes. You know, set the goal and then surrender your attachment to the outcome. Right. Because I know a couple that they're they're both are multimillionaires, and for a couple of decades he made most of the money, and then something there was a major shift in his in- industry, and now she's making the most of the money, mm-hmm. but they don't treat any each other any right. differently. And he actually works in her office. Now he works in her, yeah, in her business is yeah. awesome. But you know, but they, but it even though they had completely separate careers in terms of the industry, they always did it as a team and as always. a family. Yeah, and, and, and you have to remember this. Sylvester mm-hmm. Stallone wasn't always the man that he is, but he wrote a movie called Rocky, mm-hmm. right? Tyler Perry used to sleep in his car, but he wrote a play and look at him today. You know, Chris Gardner couldn't pay the bills and his wife left him. But today his net worth is $60 million. Mm-hmm. So we have to remember, we play for the same team. My thing is just continue to grow together. And not apart. And not apart. Mm-hmm. I think that's the main thing that has kept Janice and I's relationship is we've continued to grow together. And we try to teach other people the same. We never have really, one has never really, not that we're in any sort of competition or anything like that, but I think sometimes some people just do outgrow the other, like in terms of, you know, mentally, physically, whatever it is, right? And so, like, Janice, she started getting to this yoga thing, and she's been, you know, stretching and bending and uh, doing all different types of 
uh, exercise and weight. <laughs> She walking around here looking all sexy. So I got myself in the gym. I know that's right. <laughs> and I told her. He has I been said, going to exercise twice I've been twice in the gym every day, day, twice a I day. I cannot believe and it. And I told her, I said, you ain't going to be walking around here looking all sexy. And <laughs> that's I'm just That's right. I think, I think one of the you great I mean? things but, so important is that, you know, the things we did when we were single, you know, that we did to take care of ourselves and for, you know, also to still be attractive, we still need to do when we're married. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think if anything, the competition within our household is competing against the best version of our individual yeah. self. Right. But right now, I'm trying to outshine the, the best version that Janice had, right. has ever been in my life. And right now, right. he's trying to do that. And as a result, I think we motivate each other. We do. But it's sourced from a place of potential and love, not, right. you know, competition right. and resentment. Like, it, it's, it's more built off of inspiration. Yeah. Like I told Janice, you really are inspiring me with all this yoga you're doing and this stretching and bending. <laughs> And so it was more inspiration for me. Just like, for example, I read a lot. Yeah. If you, if you you catch me anywhere, you're going to catch me with a book in my hand. And so Janice noticed that. While I was watching Netflix. While she was watching Netflix, Ben's watching. <laughs> and she said, you know what? I need to start reading more. And then she started to read more. So it's more about inspiration. It's, I guess you could call it friendly competition, but I would call it yeah. more, we just inspire each other. Just like I just iron sharpening iron and iron and right you know, and, and I know that for some people that might be on here you're like okay well I'm not at that place <laughs> you know yeah. I'm not there and and there were times that we weren't there you know and that seemed like it was lasting too long and I had to get on the phone with the <laughs> Rockmans and I just felt like my husband wasn't like I didn't want to outgrow him it was it, it was a fear that I would outgrow him mm -hmm. because we are so different so I'm like okay I feel like I'm I'm doing the most I feel like I'm doing the most. Something's wrong. Like why, why, mm -hmm. what, what needs to happen? And so I would just, first of all, I got quiet because I didn't want, the first thing I have to do is just shut up and just process those thoughts and what's the best way to say it. And I think one of the biggest um, keys of advice you guys gave us that I always remember is that he's my CEO. And so it reminded me that I had the power in how I, you know, to really, um, be mindful for how I'm going to speak to him, how I'm going to relay my thoughts towards him and all these different things and treat him like he is my CEO. And so it doesn't come off all harsh. It doesn't come off. What do I always get it right? Absolutely not. You know, do I know how to say I'm sorry? I absolutely do. And shift. Yeah. You know, but there were times where I was like, okay, why does it feel like we were going separate ways? And you had your own feelings about yeah. it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there was just, uh, you know, there was times where I felt like she wasn't outgrowing me, but she she does a lot more than I do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's more out, like, she'll show outside and I'm more internal. You know what I'm saying? So I, I read and I and I have stuff in my brain. You know, it's just like, I don't just share it. You know, right. I'm like, oh, I read, you know, and I do stuff online and I'm more, you know, a visual learner. So I got to do stuff in, 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 in the mix. So I'm like, oh, well, you're not leaving me. I'm just not doing as much as you, as yeah. far as, you know, what, what she's doing, you know what I'm saying? So it looks like I'm not progressing. Or it's not I, always really as, was. as um, seen, or he doesn't right. know mm -hmm. the way I do. Yeah. Because yeah. my guess, my guess would be that you, you probably do maybe as much, if not more than what she does, but it's just done it's in a, done different a different way. way. Right. It's you done in a different way. Yeah. So it's really important, you know, it's almost like you want to pace and lead, pace and lead. There are times mm -hmm. where I have slowed down a little bit, or I think maybe even he slowed down a little bit. It's not, and it doesn't mean that he stops what he's mm -hmm. doing or pursuing or mm -hmm. I stop it, but just where I can be kind of like lock and step with my family and my right. career where it's growing, you know, in, in tandem, mm -hmm. in tandem at the same time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like, you know, give your husband a chance to talk, give him a chance to breathe because we can have so much to say. I have so many women that are like, well, he just doesn't have an opinion or he just doesn't make decisions. And I'm like, he used to, <laughs> you, you beat it out of him somehow. <laughs> but oh, yeah, oh, she's always know. pulling, she's always <laughs> pulling up here. What do you feel about this? And what do you think about that? And, and so I don't want to, I don't want to assume I know what right. he's thinking or yeah. Right. So I'm like, I'm just going to wait for you to answer. I want you to tell me what you want to see happen. I want you to, let, not, not like he's a child. I'm like, just let no, me. No, no, you want to be led. 
But there's times where I would ask Rock, like, well, what do you think about this? And then he'd be like, mm, I'm not sure. And then maybe I'll just jump in before he can even start talking. And then mm-hmm. I start telling him. And then I'm like, I just completely like robbed myself of that opportunity to get to know him better. Mm-hmm. And for him to, that was like a leadership moment that I just stepped in and just kind of walked all over it. Mm-hmm. So I had to really practice that I had like two ears and one mouth for a reason and try and listen a lot more. And if it took an extra day or two, be okay with that because mm-hmm. at least we're kind of co-leading and he can be the CEO and I can be the vice president. And it's not that I'm just like, well, I'll forget it out of fear. I'm just going to go do everything because I don't think it's ever going to happen. <laughs> yes, that's a great point. Yeah. That's a really good point. And one of the things that I think is also important is that we do allow the person who's strong in whatever area it is to just right. kind of lead in that place. And I think that oftentimes pride will sometimes really get in the way of couples being able to be like just that strong unit that they're mm. in. There are nine different types of intelligences. And a lot of times we judge ourselves or our couple or in our coupleship, we judge mm-hmm. and we think that, well, oh, the academic intelligence is better or the social intelligence is better or the technical one is better. Honestly, like is with all my degrees and stuff, if, I, if he wasn't here right now, I wouldn't even be on this webinar because he's that guy. <laughs> he does all that, <laughs> yeah. all the lighting tech stuff. You know, we go to things, webinars, all of that. And we don't, you know, we really have, re- we have released the need to judge those right. skills and those talents and who's the visionary, who's the tactician, who's the strategist. And we just kind of lean into and, to who's, who's strong where you yeah, are and make it the strongest team. That's a great point. And I think the first step to that is number one, understand, and I think it's really important for, I, I'm sure you've heard of the DISC profile. Right. Where you understand your personality yeah. type. Yes. There's another one that digs even deeper. It's called um, Myers Briggs. No, not Myers Briggs, but um, the uh, motiv- motivational gifts. Yeah, motivational gifts. Really understanding the personality traits of your mate and their one, love language and their love language, mm-hmm. right? But then accepting that acceptance is the key, right? Accepting that okay, I'm weak here, they're strong there, and then. Once you accept it, then you can you can begin to flow in those gifts because you're not annoyed that they can't do something, but you know you just know you just accept that fact and you know that okay they're strong here so let's focus here, right? And once you have that acceptance, I think you can really begin to flow. You can really have unconditional love. Oh, absolutely. But you know what? You can't unconditionally love him until you learn how to unconditionally love, love yourself. yourself. <laughs> So you haven't gotten that down pat, you know, you just work on becoming the change that you wish to see in the world, in your relationship. And uh, (laughs) oh my god! And I just thought about this too. I I think also understanding personality traits, some people, especially entrepreneurs are really hard on themselves Uh because as an entrepreneur, you feel like I always have to be on the go. I'm always going as I cannot take a day off because if I take a day off, I'm going to miss something. Right. So then people who are generally hard on themselves are hard on everybody else that's around them. You see, the, so you see everything else in your own eyes. Right. So who's the closest person to the entrepreneur, either the husband or the wife, whichever one is the entrepreneur. Okay. So, so really the way you are toward yourself, like, oh, I got to do yeah. this. I got to do this. I got to get this it's together. I got to get that to together. Them. It's not personal. Uh-huh. They deal with you the same way they deal with themselves. Exactly. And so they go to you and they say, hey, you know, we need to do such and such and so and so. But the conversation, you don't know that they just had the same conversation in their own mind about themselves. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You preach right. it. <laughs> so once so just again, just be patient with the process. Know what season you're in. There's four different seasons in life and relationships. So you're either in planting, watering, harvest or pruning. And if you're going through a really tough time right now, it just might be pruning time. But yeah. you got to stick around for the good part. So get some good coaching. Coaching. Get some good mentoring. Mm-hmm. Um, get get a tribe and a community, so you don't have to do it all on your own. And ex- I think we're out of time too. Last thing I want to say, and accept <clears throat> the fact, accept it that there are going to be problems. Right. You have to remember is the rain doesn't last forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can't rain all the time. Mm-hmm. Eventually, the sunshine will come, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's a beautiful, beautiful day. Mm-hmm. You allow that to happen. It's yeah. always better on the other side. I, told you these that for years it's mm-hmm. always better on the other side and has it not always mm-hmm. been better on the other side you sure i love wow. it i love it Go ahead. wow well, yeah i mean that's that's what it is man for us it's the same it's uh you know like you said she's very hard on herself you know and there's times where you know i know with 
what she's telling me is normally what she's telling herself. And right. so I get excited about, you know, what she's saying at that, at that present time. You know, I, I give her, you know, she'll still say whatever. And I'll just sit there and be like, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, because I already, I, like I said, we've been married almost 18 years. So I know wow. when she gets like that, she's, she's, she's just throwing stuff, you know. And then later on, she's like, I'm sorry I said that to you because I know I was thinking about something. And I'm like, I know, you know, I know I, I'm, I'm just here. I'm here to, to, to deflect all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because and I try to sift through what really needs to get done. Uh, you know, as far as, as, as her business, you know, cause like I said, I, I have my own job, but then I know I have my job in, in her, in her world. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So we, you know, we, we work on it together as far as our faults and, 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 and stuff like that and our strengths and our faults. There's, there's stuff that uh, I know that I need to work on, but it's also stuff that I know that um, she can help me with, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Cause she brings the best out of me and I bring the best out of her. There you go. Uh, you know, and so uh, when, when we work it's together, good, that's, that's what happens. When we get synergy and we start getting going, you know, it's just, it's amazing. And But we, we both can't be on at the same time, you know, because <laughs> then we leave the little ones out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, right. they, they come into play too. So it's like a lot of that, a lot of that synergy, it happens and it's like, all right, we have to stop. One of us got to stop. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's you know, good. Gotta, that's good. Go back and, and worry about the kids. Uh, mm-hmm. So I know that's, that's, a, that's an important part. Also, yeah. um, one more question, because I know you guys were getting your video together before you could get on. If you, um, we'll leave questions for another time. I think everybody is just commenting and they're just loving the information mm-hmm. as of right now. I didn't see any questions <laughs> <you can laughs> raise or anything like that. Um, but what would you have, is there anything that you just wish someone would have told you about marriage before entering into to be one and a family and you know the two families coming together and, and you know just the whole dynamic um what would you have told yourself your younger self before entering into marriage mm-hmm. I guess I can take this one first uh focus on being the best version of yourself and let the relationship take care of itself hmm. I was so, Janice and I, we dated a lot during college years, and I was so focused on our relationship and just us being together, and I was young, and I was I was so focused on us that I wasn't just becoming the best version of myself, right? Uh, whatever, whatever that means, <laughs> yeah. right? But I think sometimes when we're young and in love, you know, there's that old saying, uh, if you let it go and it'll fly away and if it come back to you, it was sure. no, I, well, I don't know the whole saying, but I just loved us so much. It was just such a beautiful thing. I had never experienced anything like it in my life. It was just something just was so special about our connection. And that was a big focus mm-hmm. at the time. So if I could say anything different, it's just focus on becoming the best version of yourself. Not that I was a dog or nothing, you know, not that I was just, you know, I was an all right dude, but I would have focused on a lot more building myself up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What would you say, Jen? Um, that is good. Um, um, that's just a couple things. I think like to own your own power and, and what I mean by that, like, figure out who and what owns your power. Um, whenever you have, like, a fear-based response to something, you know that it owns your power. And when you have a fear-based response, it could be getting frustrated. It could be, be being depressed, anxious. Um, and I just think that early on, I let a lot of things own my power. And I just want it to be understood mm-hmm. so much. Like, if you would just understand where I'm coming from, like, if you just understand my point of view, well, let me just try and say it in a different way. And I spent a lot of energy, you know, mm-hmm. having those kind of conversations mm-hmm. with you. And it was just like, oh, my goodness. Like, do I understand myself? Do I understand mm-hmm. me? Let me focus on that. Because <laughs> I would just give him, I would just put a lot of um, expectation on him mm-hmm. to understand me and to validate me and things like that. Um, and then also just realizing that most people are doing most, maybe not everybody, but most people are doing the very best that they can at their current level of awareness. 
Mm-hmm. And and I didn't realize that before, you know. Um, so just be careful. And, mm, and the la- one more time. Most right. people are doing the very best that they can at their current level wow. of awareness. And it doesn't mean their current level of awareness will always be the same. It may evolve. But give give people, you know, the time and the space to evolve to and to grow. And then lastly, if you're so bent on changing somebody or so disgusted by something or frustrated with something, it probably is something within yourself that you don't, that, that you're trying to, that you're still trying to work out or need to deal with. Um, and so a lot of it is that self-reflection, working on managing my own reactions as opposed to trying to get him to change something. Mm, that's so awesome thank you all so much for being on thank tonight you. we had fun this You're was welcome. great man. This was awesome. yeah this was awesome and of course mm-hmm. we're gonna have to do it again tell people where they can reach you um you guys meet virtually of course they are our marriage coaches so um just tell people more about relationship rescue i know you guys have a lot going on in media um that is the area that you are called to and so uh, but definitely share share yeah, um, we're excited. Yeah, yeah, we need to do a conference we, together. We do. That would be awesome. I'm, I'm that looking forward to that. Um, yeah. where, where do you want uh, that? So email us if you want to continue the conversation. Uh, we're definitely open. We still take on clients. We, uh, Whatever the case may be, email us. Once again, if you want to continue the conversation, info at relationshiprescuerx dot com is our email address uh our website is relationship rescue rx dot com and um you can find us on facebook find us twitter, on facebook, twitter instagram. instagram instagram is the rock man. hit us up on instagram <laughs> you already know what it is uh, yeah we're out we out here all right yeah. thank y'all so much for being on mm-hmm. we Greatly appreciate you guys. You wanted to add anything else before we got off the line? Just want to say thank you. And uh, we learned a lot today, too. So it's good. (laughs) Thank you, Tony, man. It's good to see you, man. Yeah, you guys are a beautiful couple. We're so, so, so proud of who you are. Thank you. Look at those smiles. They're beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Gracias. De nada, de nada. (laughs) You know, we've been working on the Spanish. Working on the (laughs) Spanish. I use Google Translate. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Thank you again. All right, you guys. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, If you have, uh, you see, we put it in there in the chat info at relationship rx relationship rescue rx.com. And we also put it on Facebook. Continue to share and let the word, you know, let the word get out there that we're going to do this every fourth Monday, married to a CEO chick. Spouses are included, couples. Um, We have a lot that's going on. So definitely go to the website website check out the event page our first live event in orlando is going to be february 25th we have wow. brown into the cleveland market oh yes. my goodness um shout out to our regional coach jennifer enders so we're going to be out in cleveland again um on march 10th so just definitely go to the event page and check out the uh what, what did i call up i came up with a name for this event i can't remember it right uh, now uh, uh, i'm drawing a blank too yeah it's not on my table what is oh uh, vision board <laughs> after party tour that's oh. it Oh, I love that. That's awesome. So, yeah, so we are going and bring your vision boards, and we're going to talk about execution because we put the wow. do and dominate. So we definitely want to see you guys there. So thank you for tuning in. We'll see you. The couples, the men, we want you guys back on. Thank you so much for being on with us tonight. And just enjoy your marriage. What's your saying for marriage? I know you have some amazing one-liners. Oh, my goodness. Oh. I'm all out of them right now. Hey. <laughs> Hit it in. Hit it in. <laughs> that works. Hey, what he said. Whatever that means. To to it in. <laughs> but listen, I want to say this too, though. Colleen, we are, Colleen and Tony, we are so proud of you all because we remember where you all started before yeah. all this CEO chick and all yeah. this stuff that blew up and conferences that you all are doing. We are so proud of Everything you guys. Everything is like so well amazing. structured. It's so you good. You are so handsome and so beautiful. Yeah. You all look so Hollywood. And you know what I love? Y'all they built their the business. He built his corporate professional life. And they built their family together, at the man. same time. Yep. It can be done. Yep. Yeah, so we have to teach y'all, your kids. man. We have to teach your kids. Love you guys. Looking forward to your conference, TV show, yes, radio show, everything. the brand, the T-shirt, the workout gear, high yoga yeah. stuff. <laughs> hey, get it in. Yeah, get it in. Get it in. All right, and the T-shirt that says that. Yeah, get it in. All right. Uh, <laughs>